today, if somebody goes out and gets a commercial uh, genetic test, what's the difference between someone who goes out and gets a whole genome sequence and say someone that you know goes to one of the over the counter uh, sequencing services like a twenty three and me? What's the difference in the analysis and what's the difference in the information? This is an important question. And if people are listening, uh, this is time to perk up and listen closely. Um, so there is a big difference and not all genetic testing is the same. Um, and I'm not being critical of any of the companies or, or that do this, but just to realize they're trying to serve a different purpose. So 23andMe as an example. Um, or Ancestry.com uh, as another example. Those are more things that are not medically sort of targeted. They're not trying to answer a specific medical question of, do you have an increased risk of breast cancer? Do you have an increased risk of heart attack? They're really not getting at that level of detail. Uh, just as an example, Ancestry.com is very good at being able to understand your heritage, your, your literally where your family is from, where your ancestors are from. It's quite detailed at this point in terms of being able to say what part of the world your family comes from, if you might uh, be adopted as an example, not know about your heritage or your ancestry, be able to give you some of that. And I'll also say for better or for worse, if you're trying to find this out, you may identify some of your blood relatives, um, some people who uh, you would know from a family reunion and some people you might not know for some reason. And people sometimes find out about that uh, uh, like I said, even people who are adopted, I've, I've known to find some of their, um, actually their birth parents that way. So that's one type of thing, but that's not really for the intention of identifying information for a medical purpose. Um, and so I just want to warn the listeners that if you get something uh, back, or more importantly, if you don't get something back from those tests, it doesn't mean an all clear for your health. It doesn't mean that you're free of cancer or won't have any increased risk. On the other hand, there are other tests that are really designed for a medical purpose to answer a question. Um, and you didn't ask about this specifically, but many of the listeners will know that they would have gotten a test, for instance, if they were thinking about having children, uh, plan planning a family, wanting to know if they are children or if they were at increased risk of having a child with something like Tay-Sachs disease or cystic fibrosis, one of those other recessive conditions uh, that we alluded to. And so that's not what the attention uh, for personal health so much as, as I said, thinking about future children or families. And um, let me be clear, this is not necessarily about abortion, but this is about being able to care for a child long term and think about uh, reproductive options. So that's another use case and a very common use case in terms of what people will do. Um, another common use case is for thinking about cancer risk. And so some people may have a family history of cancer. Some people may say their particular heritage is such that, uh, for instance, if they happen to be of Jewish ancestry, ancestry, they may be concerned because they know there's a higher chance of having a BRCA, uh, sort of called breast cancer 1 or BRCA 1 or 2 mutation. And so some people do a very targeted test, and, and I'm emphasizing targeted, very specific clinical question. And again, it's answering that question. It's not necessarily giving a genetic clean bill of health for everything. It's, it's very focused. On the other hand, you alluded to what I'll call a genomic test, and, and I'm going to make a distinction between genetic and genomic. And what I mean by genomic when I'm saying this is it's really including, as we talked about, all genes. So it's not focused on just a handful of genes. It's really focused on the genes in the genome, those 20,000 genes. Um, you can look at just the coding regions that we talked about before, those looking at the protein sequence that we call that in the aggregate an exome because those little pieces that code the genes are exons, E-X-O-N-S, and when you put them together in the aggregate, we call it the exome. Other individuals are interested in knowing all three billion of their base pairs, their entire genetic sequence, and we call that a genome, and that will include everything, both the coding and the non-coding regions. I think of that in terms of genome sequence as being, in some ways, the, T-H-E, genetic test right? It's all encompassing. One can blind yourself to look at very focused uh, subsets of genes based on a clinical indication, or you can look at everything because you want to look at everything about your health or 
because maybe you don't know all of the genes for your particular symptoms, and you have to be all-encompassing in terms of that. And we may get to some of those use cases, but there are many conditions that are genetically heterogeneous or have many different genes that can cause them. And so we want to be all-encompassing in terms of looking at that. Even though we can sequence all that data right now, we can't interpret it all. So as an example, out of those 20,000 genes, we have now assigned functions with disease for about 7,000. But that still means that for over 50% of those genes, we don't know of a gene disease association. And in even, I will say, because this happens to me with fair frequency, even when I think I know about an association of a gene with a disease, if we study it further, we'll realize that they don't map just one to one. There may be more than one disease associated with a gene. And so there's still things that we're figuring out about what those genes do. Mm -hmm.